Hi and welcome to the Two Shop Talk and we are keeping on with the series where we talk about things to consider when you get into tattooing, sort of what's behind the scenes of tattoo work and this will be kind of the step where you are just started and you have been all excited and optimistic but then reality kicks in, you got in the shop and maybe it's not as busy as you want or maybe you are on the opposite side of spectrum when you are in that shop where you have to do things you don't want to do and you're like ah my 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 plan was different and now this is all like going wrong or not happening at all carlos let's look from your perspective when you work in a shop and you start and then you are like where are my customers like this is shop why nothing's happening so i have why i have four quiet days <laughs> Yeah, everywhere you're gonna go. Even if you have a lot of years of experience, you go to a new place and a lot of times you have to show that you exist <laughs> and you have to do whatever to have some interaction with the people who live around that area or follow that shop. I made a lot of designs, a lot of flash designs and I posted and I wanted to show people. A lot of times get them good price but not too low. I mean, <laughs> be careful with this. Even, like, I did sometimes tattoos for free just to make a tattoo and uh, post it uh, so I have something to post. Until this day I still do this. I, from time to time, I pick one customer secretly and <laughs> not showing off. I just pick one and do a free tattoo. Or if there's a style you want to lean into. Yeah. Like, you know, only you don't be... have portfolio to show, you can be like, yeah. okay, you here now. Yeah, so I basically try to just uh, show people who am I and what can I do. And when I just started tattooing, I was just drawing designs, showing what I can draw. There was win-win situation. One thing you you were drawing because of uh, try to sell the flash. Another thing you draw uh, so you can learn something new. That helped me a lot. It, maybe it wasn't so bright and nice uh, and cozy first two years, but I could survive. I could have food, uh, money for food. I it's could slay pizza slice and I could just uh, continue my my work as a tattooer yeah and even if you don't do the style like Carlos do where it involves a lot of drawing like even like photoshop a bunch of things if you are in more in that department or take a ruler and draw a bunch of triangles you know or use your tablet but put stuff draw mandalas on. draw whatever flower like I mean whatever you, you like to make this is how I kind of went to the style what I like to do. Everything I draw, I was drawing like I would like to ha have this as a tattoo and I have to give someone as a tattoo. Then the next thing kind of came as a, of course, money, you know, but that's, I guess, depends on a person. I always wanted to make a tattoo that I'm uh, into it and I have fun to do it. And I believe that, that I can sell that one, you know. Maybe 15 designs I could sell one, two, sometimes three, you know. You, nev you could never tell. Draw something and people suddenly like it. I remember when you drew like a hundred tattoo designs and you sold maybe 10 out of them. Yeah. And then I spoke with other tattooists in other place and guy was like, oh yeah, but I drew like a... Mm -hmm. five pieces and only like somebody took two of them it's like dude you, that that's a lot like if you yeah. take percentage wise dude did like 10 percent sell you did like 25 percent you know mm. it's a yeah it's not exactly. like it's not like all the stuff you will put out there people will be running after you and be like oh things that you made it mm. yeah exactly and it's uh, every place is different some places some shops are more busy some less if you're in a shop where you don't have much work this is a way to do it uh, i talked with many tattooers who struggle with this beginning uh, stuff and they stuck in this kind of mode and they just keep on it's not getting better man like it's i don't think it's gonna get better if you're not gonna do anything it's not like uh, somehow accidentally you become good and everyone is coming to you. There is people who don't have work enough, enough work, even if they are really good tattooers. I can see that it's something to do with this thing that you don't show your drawings. You, you're really kind of slow with all that. Or you never mentioned that you are available. Yeah. People maybe or, think, oh, he's busy all the time. Yeah. I don't have experience in many countries, but where I'm been, I've seen that this works and. There's also that meme where guy sticks 
was taking his own bicycle wheel and falls and it's like why i don't get to make cool designs and mm. then you don't make cool designs and then you're like oh damn customers you know yeah yeah also uh, on that part i want to mention that for example you do a bunch of flash designs and nobody takes them and you are upset but if you want to do them keep on posting them now when carlos forcefully pushed me into making tattoo designs he tortured me and said you have to do it and i said okay if you say so and that's like <laughs> seven years ago and then i opened this shop and i again posted a bunch of stuff that i had available and suddenly like five years later i've done more of my flash than i did back then it's just there's always a right place and time for the right design and right customer yeah or maybe I was just such a future trendsetter that I was living uh -huh. ahead of my time and doing stuff too cool for the time. People will find it if it's... It works. And if it doesn't work at all, then maybe consider that it's a garbage design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've seen guys uh, making garbage designs and I also work. It's not about that. It's just you're, you are drawing, you're spending your time, you're making something that you want to do and this is already some meaning behind, you know, like there is some power behind. I don't know, like there is many places, I really believe that there is shops where even that don't work. Maybe your style is not just... I remember uh, my colleague speak to, uh, about one shop in England where he was just putting out his stuff for uh, like 50% discount afterwards and no one picked him because everyone got used to that realistic in that shop. He was busy doing realistic tattoos. He just couldn't do his style. Really depends, but... Uh, what, what is he doing now? Everything that he likes. <laughs> so he got that. <laughs> Yeah. And also, like I've spoke to people who get into apprenticeships in those chain shops where you are just booked, like you have no choice. Somebody books you for cheap for all day. They come in with their Pinterest stuff. But then again, they never put out stuff they want to do, you know, like mm. even if you don't post it, you can be like, how about that? I also have these things about mm. it's a, uh, a hustle. You have to hustle. And if, if that doesn't work, then at some point, like if you try it at all, but like really try it all, don't jump from place to place. Maybe it's time to change a shop. Like I was following this one tattooist. She was in a shop in one place and she was tattooing, but the tattoos were like meh. Then she got into that super busy type of chop shop and it got better because you can see it's improving because it's just a volume of work, like, you know, and, and uh, but then she said herself that there's like, I can't learn anything because we are eight <coughs> apprentices and one tattooist and apprentices have apprentices. And then she got in a decent shop and it was like, let's say the first progression on a year in a year was from mm, to like me. Mm -hmm. And then within next half a year, it was from like what was there to like, oh shit, like I'm, 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 I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I want to do stuff like that. And it's a matter of being in good environment. Yeah, you have to. But totally. also like all the time, want to do this stuff, want to do that stuff. Like, you know, getting whatever to do your friend for free. So you can put out that like, you see, this is how that stuff looks on the, on the skin. Unfortunately, that's true. Sometimes you have to change places and this is how just it is. Just because you are in a tattoo shop doesn't mean it's a good shop. And maybe it's the only shop where you've been and you think this is how it should be but there is many shops around that they are not good and maybe the customers are not coming because the shop's reputation is bad or whatever reason I, I know some shops that are good shops they're legit shops they're good shops but just the environment doesn't work for a specific person and then they like change shop and suddenly like the progression that was three years and it's from good to better and then in half a year they go from better to like wow like you know i've never seen anything like this before it's up to you but sometimes environment can be limiting or like not motivating i would say yeah. that sounded very life coachy <laughs> like, it's just from I, the experience I should, I should say it, like, <laughs> this? Uh -huh. but it's funny because uh, it's people like we, i mean i can say this like you can say this because you have an experience, you've been there for many years and I also have seen it. I still feel like I'm a just new in this business. And if you look at this whole perspective, like whole view, I am new. But at the same time, I think if you're tattoo for 
or if you've been around the doing for more than 10 years you start to see things first year in business you will never see this stuff and it's good that someone tells you this i would be happy if i would hear this and sometimes you don't want to hear things about your shop you don't want to move away from it but want to grow as a tattooer maybe sometimes you have to move i mean we did live stream which you can check in a card or link down below and there were tattooists that are tattooing for one and a half years and they are like amazing like you see that stuff and like it's, it's crazy yeah that combination of a lot of effort and being in the right space in the right like mentors and all that stuff well, i don't know how long i'm around this stuff but i never like i've been in the shops and i don't consider myself as like i'm only tattooist because i've been messing with all sorts of shit including this channel so if i would put that effort into tattooing my mm. tattooing probably would be better <laughs> I'm where i want it to be yeah i'm yeah. the type of person who's like all over the place you are evolving slower than normal people <laughs> because you are all over the place and doing all kinds of stuff yeah <laughs> if someone's getting amazing in two years that's a perfect combination of effort of skill wanting to be there and having the right like mentor yeah yeah Definitely. If you if you consider to get into tattooing and you will get that that's that's a gamble you know like mm. you can be the most putting time in it and then you're just in the wrong place and it's not gonna work or yeah, other way around yeah. like you are like in the best place but you're like huh who's gonna teach me why no one's uh, running after me because I wanna be this mm. tattooist and some tattoo jobs you don't have to be this crazy guy who draws everything sometimes it's uh, enough being just a a simple old school tattooer like in old days people come in they pick maybe design that you made it uh, like the flash old school flash it's similar to super similar to the old uh, sailor's style and this is like traditional way to do it you make the design from the old school designs you post it or maybe you bought one of them flash sheet sets that are made to be replicated yeah and you do that and you don't have to create your own style always yeah i've been in, like... in situation where guy comes in and it's very traditional like a rose design he's like mm -hmm. can i get this done guy is like goes draws his own version offers the guy's like no i still want that one and in that situation it's cool that guy attempted to draw but also it's such a classic thing where guy was like no i still want that one and it's it's a perfect situation the only downside was that the artist was like he doesn't <laughs> want my stuff but either way it's similar it's classic design and at the end of the day the customer wanted it you know and yeah that, oh, yeah that was a bit of that dramatic you've been in situations where somebody <laughs> makes a custom design and customer says it's not my cup of tea and the person runs off crying because like, i've seen that i oh. i have not, I, you don't have a good feeling when uh, you've been spending three hours on the design hoping that this will kill it a person who comes for it is like oh, i don't like it i don't feel it i would say i had that sometimes i, I, it's I have also not it's, funny it's, it's kind of <laughs> it puts you down you're like oh, i was so hoping to do it okay i i drew these three versions i'll put them out there and say these designs are available always the problem always. problem with me i never do it i never remember to do it i'm like oh cool I'll, i can put those three yeah. designs out and then three weeks later that's like, a good one well where was yeah it? especially so. now with all the ipads and digital stuff mm -hmm. it's so much easier but it's so much easier to lose it because it's in a digital form so you don't have this stack of papers on the table so Bring you it out quickly <laughs> there's some copies put it in every room drawing those extra designs person didn't take it you have a slot for offer you know you have to post everything is available times available cancellations uh, I don't do that much, that stuff, because uh, our shop is busy and we are having enough work and it's like I, I don't have time for even like sharing anything that I had cancellation or anything. I will enjoy my day. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm lucky. And also, like, if you run a shop, you're like, oh, I had a cancellation or free mm -hmm. day. Like, maybe I should do the paperwork because it's... 
Yeah, 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 exactly. I did, back in days, I did the... All, back in days, I did lots of things just to sell it. How long time it took you to do those hundred designs? It was like a week or something? Yeah. You had like a week and... Yeah. My head was hurting afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I, I was empty-headed. I, I think you got to the first half pretty fast and then you... Oh my I think God. you did 50 in two days and then five days yeah and there's a, oh, oh it was like eating the same food uh, <laughs> all the time cool i made a like a small flashbook to show my customers when they come in like a portfolio there, and there was many reasons why i did it one was uh, just because i was like oh if i'm gonna do 200 designs i will probably learn a lot from that so i did that and then we decided to do a counter with drawings as well and i, I again i was like oh my god there could be designs on a counter and if some people come in they can see and get inspired and maybe decide to get something similar to that style that I draw on the counter and I draw more I think there was also around 100 designs on the counter and I did that in two nights the final battle was I don't know whiskey what? <laughs> whiskey and a tattoo on the on the leg and on here speaking of quiet times and like if you don't feel like drawing like specifically drawing i often experiment i see some stuff and i'm like that design should be easy to do yeah and i do something similar and i just uh i like all the digital stuff so i would be like okay let's see how i can make this design just for sake of doing it like i don't even do that style and all that so but it's a it's an exercise to see how to do it and then you post it and like whatever if somebody takes it they take them mm. yeah i sort of what it's sort back engineer i'm like okay i see that design somebody posted like oh look at my awesome shit and i'm like hmm is it really that awesome and then i try to do it just for sake of doing my lines got better because of doing so many line work designs i could feel that the grip started to get stronger and i actually when i draw uh, flash designs when i do outlines i'm like holding that pen like i'm gonna break it uh, and the like grip, mean it. I, like, I mean it, I'm like holding it, I'm pushing it to the paper uh, really strong and it's from tattooing, I believe it's something to do with that and actually it's it helped me get better with my line work and and I, I really believe in that I also got really quickly good with my line work uh, when I started tattooing just because I draw so much uh, line work designs and my mentor who was teaching me for two months, <laughs> he told me this thing, make, remake the same design five times till the lines on the paper gets good. And I did it and, and hey man, it worked thanks to this guy. Woo! Totally teach me basics that helped me a lot. I will always be thankful to this guy. Sadly, it was only two months. Again, if you're in that place where you have to do things you don't like to do and often those things are all the Pinteresty stuff names printed out scripts they are the hardest things to do so if you can nail perfect printed out script that's or a all heart it's it or a heart <laughs> yeah or like this one line half moon right? they are hard to do oh. so if you can in your like where you're like oh, i don't like to do this stuff but it'll teach you discipline to like to be good with the, with the stuff that you want to do so again take it as an exercise because those things are hard to do like uh, you have to know how to follow the stencil line this is a, this is like doesn't matter where the line goes of course the direction gonna change your uh, balance for your hand but man it took me i think seven or eight eight no, eight years. It took me eight years till I figured out how to actually do lines on every direction. Well, speaking of apprenticeships, yours was two months. My first one and a half, two years was doing all the apprenticeship stuff without considering even becoming to do it. It's like, I'll be piercing in the shop and uh, do the reception work. And then tattooist sort of steered me into tattooing and to practice like the art stuff and I was tracing stencils for half a year, helping, you know, and knowing all that stuff. And then when I tried first practice skin, I was like, oh yeah, I've done this start a million times. <laughs> and when I attempted to tattoo it with the tattoo machine, I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Yeah, it's not uh, a skin for sure. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's all exercise. Uh, totally. 
You have to have a grip. You have to have a tip. I think only <laughs> boxing is only place where you can get good with just wishful thinking <laughs> and rockstar attitude. Everything yeah, else, yeah. Everything else is different. <laughs> Next time somebody challenges you in a fight, you're like, I've been thinking about this. I'll show you. <laughs> and you do a leg kick. Ah, oh, that's not boxing. Think outside the box. <laughs> box. Conclusions. If you are starting tattooing and you are not happy with the pieces you do, put pieces out that you want to do. And if you get pieces that you don't want to do, but they are technically challenging, take it as an exercise. Because I think in my experience, one and a half, two years to be amazing, it has to be a perfect combination of where you are, what your already skill set is, rest of it, I think. On average, it takes mm -hmm. at least five years for tattoos to be like somewhere com like legit. You've been, you've been tattooing for eight years when people are coming back to you. If I remember correctly, but this was like five to eight years when you've been tattooing and people are like, I've been tattooing for eleven years now. Yeah, yeah now, but, but, but after well, around five, I I I tattooed five years, and then I start to get full uh, normally booked for a week two weeks ahead uh, all the time because I just now get that feeling where people try tattooing for a year and they're like oh. mm. people are stupid they don't want my stuff and uh, there is some lucky kids who have beautiful skill level from beginning and I don't know wow uh, there is some lucky moments where you just got it in the center center but yeah man it's hard work think also about it depends that. on I think the place where you at because in some countries it's like you have to dedicate it more because if you don't make it you break it you don't have a backup in some countries you're like eh, I spent two years in tattooing didn't work out I'll just gonna be like a truck driver and I'll make more money bro. there's one really important thing also that's a little bit different from artsy stuff but it's it plays a big role is uh, how you communicate with your customer how you make him feel when he comes to the shop yeah it's an experience experience right? yeah yeah you you need to be a good person and Act like a friend who's <laughs> ready to, you know, like this guy is gonna lay down and be in pain. He's in, he's scared, you know. Like there is since, since the Lily Lou episode, <laughs> I can say like it is a ritual, you know, it one way or like another. A ritual, you, you, you it's an experience this. that involves physical uncomfort, sometimes pain. Yes, and like you, you put person through it, be it. A full sleeve or like a triangle yeah. you know because for some they never experienced that and they never paid for somebody to mark them for life with thing and that inflicts pain you know yeah i love this what i call it this is a ritual for like some time now because i really believe this is like a i really believe this is like a ritual and i've been telling my customers for some time now that it's it feels like that it, you and uh, i think it's healthy to think that way if you want to use numbing cream it's totally fine end of the day it's about good work but you come you're scared and it's your first tattoo and you're not numbed up even without the pain aspect just the fact that someone's putting something permanent after a while you realize it's not that bad but i like the comparison where like tattooing is like a, a bar type of setting without drinking no. you're like you know okay yeah. what are we doing here but okay yeah. you it gets personal yeah, it gets personal <laughs> it's longer session yeah and and man listen to a customer i i always uh, thought that those tattooers who put the uh, headphones on on the on their ears it's such a disconnection from that guy some people don't want to talk okay i understand but you need to be there this person is paying you money for for getting something from you and he's going through the pain i mean you have to you have to be there you I, have to be I checking have... the pulse it's like everything's fine brother Hey, ask him. Don't be shy. Oh, how many fingers? <laughs> ask him. Hey, are you good? Is it, is it painful? Should I wipe it less? You, you have to do this. And it maybe it seems silly from uh, others' guys' <laughs> perspective. But I know some guys laugh about me when I'm like, Hey, man, are you okay? 
What oh. do you think I am? Art of matters. <laughs> I, of course I'm not okay. It's in pain, you know. No, you have to ask the person. It's nice. You care about him, you know. The, and this helps. And the guy wants to come back. And it's not about only selling the design. It's about taking this customer and welcoming to your to your ritual. And he's gonna come back if he wants more tattoos. And I, it's important. I had a funny interactions within the last week. Where twice people are like, the fuck is wrong with your face? <laughs> kind of <laughs> like, uh, I was doing the <laughs> symmetrical chest tribal and it's like, you are from the side, you're looking at symmetrical thing. I'm following the reference, but I also want to double check the sides and it just messes with your brain because you're looking at symmetrical thing this way and you try to match up things. And I'm like, I'm, I'm doing this and... And the customer is like, well, what's wrong with you? Like, did, did you mess something up? I'm like, no, I want to be sure that it's all there. And I'm, I'm still doing this. Like, I'm sorry, but it, it's like well confusing. And then when the thing was done and she was looking in the mirror, she's like, oh, I see your point kind of a thing. Because it's like things are bending opposite ways, but being symmetrical. Fake expressions. Don't believe in them. Today I was doing a little touch up. I did a... A snake around the arm on a lady and then like she's like oh yeah yeah there's like this like one like wobble and stuff yeah. so we fixed all that stuff and then i decided i should go throughout all the scales and see if i if there's any like you know not connected or needs adding mm. and i'm just being there like like turning that <laughs> thing and she's like what's wrong with your face <laughs> i'm like sorry i like i i, I should have communicated mm. and that's like I'm checking all the scales, but I was all like, <laughs> just so into it and like, okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. I'm just like, like, uh, what's in Denmark, wrong? I heard many times where uh, Danish person customer is like, are you okay? Are you fine? What's wrong? You know, because I'm, I think many tattooers have this face expressions, but in, in my country, in Latvia, I think uh, Latvian people are not ready enough to ask, you know, yeah. they're like, oh, I'll deal later. Is he, serious? Is he serious or having a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> Latvian customer goes home and no, he, he lays there and he's like, okay, deal with this later. He makes a mistake, I go home, I think. <laughs> I like that in like, I worked in England, in Spain, in Denmark. People check their tattoos and tell, really? Like, yeah, this is awesome. I like it. In Latvia, dude standing in the mirror. <laughs> like, no smile, no no sounds made. Just like, how much? And they're like, do you like it? How much? And they're like, yeah, all right. it's all right. Yeah, I love it. But so, face expressions are killer. Yeah, sometimes I think you have to remember to tell person... What you're doing you're like oh yeah let, let me just double check you know because people are like why is quiet and twisting my arm and doing this stuff <laughs> and you're like mm, i nailed it <laughs> or like yeah. i'm really happy yeah. with this <laughs> I, I i once said uh, the guy's like everything is <laughs> everything is okay it's like you don't want to know <laughs> You don't want to know. Let's talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> it looks okay. If you're not gonna know, you will never know. You don't need to know that. You don't need to know. On this note, we wrap this episode up. If any questions, you don't need to know that. If there's anything <laughs> to say, say it in the comment section. And do the usual. Subscribe to the channel. Check all the links. Press likes. And if you are that one super awesome person that lives on this planet who's like, I want to share this. Please do share this. There's yeah, a share button. Yeah. You have the Facebooks. And I the love buttons. share button. Yeah. Share button. And one sharing thing, is caring. Yeah. One thing I want to like say before we cut this or end this. Please send our fresh tattoos if you're a beginner. We will judge them on the live streams every time I come here to Denmark and visit. But I think we should uh, be more precise with the dates and maybe post before so you all get prepared for it. But no, just send them into tattoo shop talk at gmail.com and then DM me on Instagram that you have sent it so I remember so I have a chance to yeah. backtrack them and connect them. And the same with the tattoo designs if you have some. Please send it, bring, bring the noise. 
Ooh, designs. Okay, cool, cool. Well, what he said. See you next episode. Check this playlist. Subscribe to Char Char Charles's channel. Bye. <laughs> There's some copies. Put it in every room. But, uh, yeah. There's some copies? Oh, he's putting his lattice? There's some copies? There's some lattice. Put it there's some copies. Put it there's some copies. And that's fucking doesn't matter. <laughs> Oh my god. There's some coffee. There's some coffee. <laughs> <There's some copies. laughs> <laughs> it's a fail. Nice. Uh, then, yeah. But, yeah.